On this day in 1909, Arctic explorer Donald McMillan dropped out of a trek to the North Pole with Robert Peary because of frozen heels. However, that was not the end of his exploring career. The Maine native reportedly made a few dozen trips to the Arctic, including one at the age of 79. There's a museum at Bowdoin College that honors both of these Mainers. Amanda Hill gave us a tour back in 2018. <laughs> From polar bears to fashion. It's made out of seal intestine, so, <laughs> which is a really terrific, light, flexible, and waterproof material. You'll find all sorts of unique artifacts inside the Peary McMillan Arctic Museum, each weaving a story about the past, present, and future of the Arctic and the Inuit. The United States is an Arctic nation. We have Arctic territory and claims on Arctic waters and strategically and economically and environmentally it's a really important place and so we are really well placed to educate people about the Arctic in all different ways. Genevieve Lemoyne is the curator of this museum which you'll find inside Hubbard Hall on the campus of Bowdoin College. We just had our 50th anniversary. The exhibits started with personal artifacts and photos collected by Robert Peary a Mainer and Bowdoin College graduate. He was a civil engineer and he graduated near, not at the top of his class. It also bears the name of fellow adventurer and alumnus Donald McMillan. But in his day, McMillan was really widely known across the country. He was a very popular public lecturer. Um, so he had a lot of name recognition at the time. It's, uh, it's diminished a little bit now. We try and keep it alive. <music> Both made regular trips north, learning about Inuit culture and survival, but it was the final expedition that would make Peary's name more widely recognized. Uh, so they left in July 1908 aboard his ship, the Roosevelt. They sailed up, they stopped in, uh, in Greenland and in a number of communities where he hired a lot of Inuit to work for him. So men and women and families, and they brought their kids with them and he bought a lot of dogs. And the group pointed their ship toward the North Pole. Peary had this elaborate plan where teams would go out and lay in supplies on the sea ice and they would be sort of uh, hopscotching up where people would follow a broken trail and then somebody else would break a new trail and lay in another cache. He would send people back when they weren't needed anymore. And finally, he sends the last, the last of the extra people, or the supporting people back, and he and Matthew Henson and the four Inuit go on that last dash to the pole. On April 6th, 1909, they arrived, or so the story goes. There were many different countries, explorers from many different countries trying to get there, um, and so it was seen as a, a nationalistic achievement. Was he the first? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Assuming, you know, there is, of course, debate over whether he got there at all, because it's not on land, it's on floating, moving sea ice. He couldn't put a stake in the ground and say, this is the North Pole and I was here, which you can do at the South Pole, because it is on land, but the sea ice is always moving. Still, they planted a flag and took a photo, making this Mainer and his small crew the first with some sort of proof they reached the North Pole. And so there was no uh, objective observer available to say, yes, there they are at the pole. And so it's always going to be something that you can contest. Which has only piqued the curiosity of this curator and museum director, Susan Kaplan. It is um, sometimes really stunning um, to realize for instance, how warm it has gotten. Both Kaplan and Lemoyne have been exploring the Arctic for decades, leading archeological trips, and they aren't the only ones inspired by what's around them. People from Bowdoin started to go to the Arctic in the 1860s. At the museum, we have 130 years of photographic history of individual communities. You can watch people grow up in these communities. And we have relationships with those communities today. And so while we are studying their past, we also have relationships with them um, today. And we work with them. We take young people on our expeditions when we are able. Through those working relationships, scientists are continuing to learn more about the area and climate change. And this museum's collection has grown from a modest 1,000 artifacts and photographs 
to more than 45,000. I think the museum is uh, really well placed to provide the public a sense of the uniqueness, the specialness of the Arctic. Beginning with a daring race to the North Pole. That was Amanda Hill reporting.